With all this talk of mirrorless cameras and new bodies and upgrades and all the rest of it, I want to talk to you about the minimum you can spend on a camera to be a commercial photographer, the minimum. And this is like just enough to get you by. And it will get you by. This is not to say like, oh, your, your work's going to suffer because of it. There's a few shortfalls and we'll talk about that as well. But I found a camera for £250 and this is not actually the one I bought for £250. I bought this for £2,000 and this is my 5D Mark II. Now mine's a little bit battle scarred. You don't get the lens with it for this price, by the way, but you can get lenses cheap. But this is my camera. For £250, you can get a full frame, 20 something megapixel camera, which you can tether, you can do live view. You've got a burst mode. That might not sound like much, but if you shot with a phase before, you'll know that this is lightning fast. And it's got a great screen on the back. This is a great bit of kit. It is also robust. This is my camera number one. This is on just over half a million shutter actuations. The return on investment from this camera would be insane. If you bought this for £250 from a store like MPB, and no, they don't pay me, but MPB, if you'd like to pay me, drop me a line. Um, the return on investment you'd get from this would be insane. And this camera here, I was using right up until lockdown in COVID, way past its expiration date. Now, you can also get the 5D Mark III, which I believe they'll still repair and service with a little bit more, but... The, these are kind of at this price point, they're almost disposable. And I know how privileged that makes me sound when you talk about a 250 pound disposable item, but in the grand scheme of cameras, it's pretty good. I mean, this whole camera is just pretty good. It's just a great, the viewfinder is massive. Just tracking the autofocus. Here it looks, we're just taking a quick picture there. It's all nice and fast, it works nicely. It's got good sync speed of 200th of a second. It's just a bomb-proof bit of kit. Now I predominantly use this as a portrait photographer, which is a bit of a curveball, so I don't do that anymore, but that was what I started on for that. So I'm gonna get some images to fly up here to show you that you really can't tell the difference because within these images, we've got images shot on a 50,000 pound phase one. We've got some shot on a RZ67. We've got some shot on a 5D SR, some shot on a 5D Mark III, a 5D Mark II, a 5D Mark IV. They're all just jumbled up. Have a guess. I bet you can't tell the difference because it doesn't matter. 20 megapixels, you can shoot a billboard, you can shoot a six sheet, and I know this because I have and I did. And the only reason I've upgraded to 50 megapixel sensors it was because some of the work I was starting to do required more cropping and post-production. It made it a bit easier. It didn't mean that it wasn't possible. I was doing the same work with this camera as I was with the 5DSR. But if you're making currently less than 30,000 a year from your photography, don't buy an expensive camera, buy one of these. It makes more financial sense for sure. You'll get the same quality of work. You can tether it, you can get into Capture One, all the good stuff, but you'll save yourself an obscene amount of money. Something you can do to really help support this channel is to hit subscribe. I've got a very small percentage of viewers actually subscribed here. If you could hit that subscribe button, I will be eternally grateful to you. And let's continue with the video. All of that money that you've saved, you can invest into what actually matters. And that's not lenses and lights, although they are important. It's test shoots. It's producing great quality work, hiring in good stylists, hiring in a good crew, getting a good retouch on set. That will make the real difference. Two of my highest paying jobs were shot on Canon 5D Mark IIs and 5D Mark IIIs. One of my very high paying jobs was shot on the 5D SR. I've never shot an extremely high paying job on a phase one. We've had to use one like, when I say not extremely high, like tens of thousands. We've had to use them on those jobs, but the really high paying jobs, the ones where you go, wow, this is my year's salary and then some, I always shot them on Canon cameras because they're just a bit more reliable than a phase. Phase cameras just have this weird knack of breaking on set. You have to take the back off, take the battery out of the body, the battery out of the back, put it all back together again, do a reset. It's a nightmare, whereas these just work. I would be happy shooting on this 5D Mark II today. The only reason I don't is because I've hammered it so hard and I don't have a backup for it anymore. So it's basically the time-lapse camera for the studio. But if I had two of them, I would continue to shoot on them today. I didn't need to buy the 5DS and the 5DSR. If anything, it's probably one of the biggest wastes of money I've ever made. I should have stuck with this, but at the point I made the upgrade, I was at a point in my career where I was anxious about kit. I was at a point in my career where I was worried about how... I was going to stand out where, you know, were, were my image is good enough? Was the image quality good enough? And of course now in hindsight, I can look back and go, it just didn't matter. Just didn't matter. It was fine. It did the job. 
it was absolutely good enough. And I know it was good enough, not just because I can look back on it now, but at the time, people were still paying me between five and 10 grand a day to shoot stuff. So why waste the money? You know, new toys are cool and everything, but paying paying your mortgage is better. Now, one last thing, and this, <laughs> this, this is a bit of a weird one, it shouldn't matter, but there's also a bit of a kudos to turning up on set with a camera that's this battered. When you're a pro and you turn up and it looks like this, everyone knows you're a pro. Pro cameras are always extremely battered. Never buy a camera from a professional photographer. When I bought my 5DS and 5DSR bodies, I bought them from like landscape hobbyists who've taken 2000 frames in their entire life. I do that in a week. You know, if this is running a time lapse on Thursday this week, this is gonna take 5,000 photos that day. And they're just bomb proof. So like, own the battle scars. Your kit doesn't need to be pristine. If anything, turning up with a pristine camera just means you don't use it much. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like this, go and check out this video up here about the Canon 5DSRs. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.